guys and welcome back to my channel for those of you who are already part of the family for those of you who are new welcome my name is Kiara Selena I am a licensed practical nurse but I am a former certified nursing assistant I worked as a CNA for two years while I was in nursing school and um, now I am a nurse on my channel I mainly make nursing related videos but I also do a bit of beauty and hair alright guys so in this video like mentioned in the title as well as in the beginning of the video I want to talk about what not to do at your CNA interview I made a another video about um, CNA interview questions and that video did really really well I had a bunch of people ask me for further questions related to the whole CNA interview thing and I gathered some things that I think are essential for you to avoid in order for you to increase your chances to get that CNA job so without further ado what not to do at your CNA interview in my personal opinion I think that two of the main things that interviewers look for when um, interviewing a potential employee is a candidate who is professional and a candidate who knows their stuff now a lot of people think that okay like what is there really for me to know like a CNA job doesn't really um, doesn't really have like much to it you know it's all about just ADLs and stuff like that and yes even though a CNA's job might be a little bit more um, physical than a nurse's job there is some critical thinking um, that is required of CNAs and you need to know your stuff so you need to be professional and you need to know your stuff being said be punctual do not be that person who arrives two minutes three minutes late thinking it's okay because it's only two minutes no in fact you shouldn't even be going to your interview on time you really should be getting there early even if your employer doesn't say anything to you about it trust me they will note it down and it'll be a good look for you so if you know you have an interview at one o'clock don't get there at one o'clock don't get there at 103 thinking that it's okay no be there for around 12 45 12 30 even if you can so that when you get there even if you know you have to wait a little bit when you get there and that receptionist gives the employer um, the call saying that you're there they will look at the time and see that you were early and that will be a good look on you Next thing you don't want to do is go to your interview looking unprofessional now I'm not saying that you have to go buy yourself a new wardrobe or you have to wear designer clothes or anything like that that's not what I'm saying but just don't get there with you know wrinkled up with a wrinkled up shirt with a stain on it with ripped jeans you know and dirty shoes you know at the end of the day even though I know a lot of people say that looks shouldn't matter it should be your credentials and and all of that stuff at the end of the day your interviewer does not know you they're getting to know you they're meeting you for the very first time and the first thing they see is you so present yourself in a good way wear a clean shirt it doesn't even have to be a button up you know like I said don't go buy yourself a whole new wardrobe but a clean shirt do the bare minimum make sure your shirt is ironed make sure you're wearing jeans or or you know pants with no rips or designs or anything on it nice clean shoes just look clean present yourself well like you don't want to do is go to your interview unprepared now I know this kind of contradicts what I said in my other CNA video because I said don't study for your CNA interview um, and the reason why I said that in my last video is because like I explained in that one um, a lot of times we kind of try to predict what the interview what the interviewer is going to ask and we study you know we study these questions try to come up with the perfect answers and then you get to the interview and the interviewer doesn't ask you any of those questions and then you kind of become destabilized you start stuttering and you know you mess up so I always say to kind of go to your interview as an open book and even if it takes you a bit of time to think about your answer it's better to think about it than you know try to assume or try to predict what the interviewer is gonna say and then end up there like super scared super destabilized you don't know what to say and and stuff like that but there are some standard interview questions that every interviewer is going to ask you. Almost every interviewer out there, not even only in the medical field, just out there, period, that interviewers are going to ask you. And two of those questions could be like, why should we hire you or why do you want to work here? Now, I can't give you that answer because that answer is like yours, right? So I'm not going to sit here and give you guys a script on what to say when the interviewer asks you that question. Think about that question, those two questions, because you're most likely going to see them. But don't go unprepared you know what I mean know a little bit about the company that you applied for just in case they ask you questions you know you can do that type of preparation just know the answer to those two questions and know a little bit about the company knowing about the company or about the hospital or residence that you're working at will impress your interviewer 
Another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to being prepared for your interview is to also um, study a little bit. Now, a lot of people might get confused by this because it's like, why should I study? A lot of people think that because a CNA's job is very um, is very physical, that there will not be any um, any medical questions or any um, case scenario types of questions. But I'm here to tell you guys that you might be asked some in all these cna interviews that i've had i've worked for three different places as a cna and i was asked some um i was presented some case scenarios that i had to answer and i'm going to share um two of the most common ones two questions that i saw at every single interview and one of the examples is okay for example you walk into your patient's room because it's time for you to um, get them ready for bed and you see your patient laying on the floor um, in the bathroom what do you do right now the answer to these questions aren't necessarily hard all you have to do is think but for that question and I, i'm gonna say it because someone asked me i had several people ask me about this um this situation in my past video you do not move your patient if you are a cna you walk into your room and you see a patient on the floor or if you see a patient fall never ever ever move the patient turn the pa don't do anything 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 to the patient in terms of moving them you can you know ask them if they're okay just to see you know if they are responsive but all you want to do is get help so it's either you stay with the patient you ring the call bell or um, if somebody's there you can ask them to go get a nurse or you pretty much just scream for for help and somebody will come and help you and you let the nurses take over but never ever ever move a patient who has fallen as a cna that is your answer okay and another question that i see um that i've seen in all my interviews is a case scenario where they say okay so you have one person who um, the nurse ordered you to bring down um, some bloods to the lab stat. You have another person who just had a bowel movement and is asking to be changed. And you have another um, patient who is vomiting. Which one do you help first, right? And the answer to that question is the one who is vomiting because there is risk of aspiration. For those of you who don't know what aspiration is, it's when um, fluids basically go down the wrong way and they end up in your lungs and um, that can cause pneumonia, right? So the answer to that would be the person who is vomiting because even though the bloods need to go down stat, yes, they need to go down stat, but at the end of the day, there's potential for this person to like possibly die, right? Because if a person aspirates and they get pneumonia, like it can lead to a whole bunch of other complications and that can eventually lead to death potentially. And the person who is having a bowel movement, I know some of you guys may be thinking, oh, well, you know, if I leave them in their brief, they're gonna get a pressure ulcer. But yes, I mean, a person has to be sitting down in their bowel movement for quite some time before they start getting a pressure ulcer. And I mean, which one would you, which one is more important? A pressure ulcer or pneumonia? You know what I mean? So it's really just thinking about prioritizing, know how to prioritize. And that is one of the things that your, your interviewer will be evaluating. So the last thing I wanna say is do not guess your answers, especially when they are related to people's lives. Um, at the end of the day, even though you are a CNA and you know you're not really doing advanced um, nursing skills, people's lives are still in your hands, right? So look back at the case scenario I just presented to you, right? If, for example, you didn't know the answer to that question and you decided to guess and you said, oh, well, I would take the bloods down, stat. Well, that's kind of a red flag to the person who's interviewing you because that shows them that you don't know how to prioritize, right? So if you don't know the answer, it's better for you to say that you don't know the answer than to guess the wrong answer because if that was a real life case scenario, someone could have potentially gotten really, really sick or even died because you prioritized wrong or because you didn't report it to a nurse. So if you don't know the answer, say that you don't know the answer and allow for someone to explain the answer to you. That looks better than just guessing the whole thing and then having the interviewer think, well, everyone on our unit is gonna die if we hire this person as a CNA because they have no idea how to prioritize, they don't know what's important and what's not, and, and stuff like that. So don't guess. Ask if you don't know or say that you don't know if you do not know. Okay, so that is pretty much the main things that I've come up with when it comes to um, 
acing your CNA interview. If you guys have anything else that you want to add, feel free to leave them in the link, in the link, in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you know anybody that this information might be valuable to. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you won't miss more content from me. And I really hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.